Action! No time like the present to do some teaching of master's omelet making. So let's review some good action, some champion's action this morning. Already having walked for health to get some essential groceries. And that being some milk. And some eggs. And some important ingredients for this next great dish. That being the misunderstood green pepper and the very chudesni bright tomato. We're going to have tomatoes and green peppers in this omelet. The first thing, though, that is key, and being in university for many years, I got to have many omelets. And omelets are a great source of that egg protein. You get some omega fatty acids that's good for the mind. And the green pepper and the tomato are great vegetables to have because you better believe lycopene is in tomatoes and vitamin C. All great, great things for the body. Okay, so let's first turn up our heat. We get it really hot. That's step number one. Step number two is we get our oil, and this is a vegetable oil. So with the vegetable oil, we want to get it nice and piping hot in the pan. That's a really important step. Hot oil for omelet is a, necess a necessary step, a necessity, as we say. So let's pour that oil in and put a generous amount. It shouldn't just be like a tiny little you know, tablespoon. It should be filling the entire bottom of the pan. That's step number one, and it should look like that. So the entire surface of the pan should have the oil. And when you make a really good Spanish omelet, your preparation of the pepper is key. Because when you eat the Spanish omelet, you have to eat, and you, you're biting into the, the nutrients here. So you get the, your zucchini, you get the green pepper, and you get one tomato. I've already pre-washed them, and as you pre-washed, you're, you're ahead of the game. So as your pan is heating up, it shouldn't take very long, no more than like two minutes. So I'm going to now turn it down to medium to give me some time to do the knife skills. So here, I'm going to place the camera, and I'm going to have to tilt it and get it here, and this should be okay. A little bit of an angle. Yeah. Okay. So now, with the uh, specific knife skills, first of all, your knife should be clean. Just have to bend for the knees here a little bit. And it's a sharp knife. Now, a lot of companies, and I happened to see one on Shark Tank the other day, it's a great company. You send your knives in, and they sharpen it for you, and then you have them back. I mean, that's a great thing. For me, being instructed by the culinary arts team at Humber College, and they made a lot of emphasis on knife sharpening. You can take a knife sharpening stone and sharpen your knife, and there's another type of stone, there's two. One is for like getting the good edge, and the second one is for making that edge really, really sharp. And you can buy that at any chef store. My knife happens to be a very good German Henkel knife, and it's a paring knife. It's, it's quite sharp, but what you want to do is on the preparation, get it to the right size so when you're eating the omelet, it tastes right. So what you do is you first, it's a zucchini for all those that never had zucchini. It's possible. I mean, there's some foods that people may have not had for whatever reason, and the zucchini typically are in this form. They've got a hard outer shell. They've got this little thing that connects them to the vine. And what you want to do is after you've washed it, you easily, and you can do this with most vegetables, you just cut the ends off. That's step number one. Second step, because I'm not going to have the entire zucchini in the omelet, I right in half. So my second half gets stored right away. And my other half, I have two options. One, I can keep the skin on. Now, when you keep the skin on, 
it may be okay. I like to take peel the skin off and you just get a nice layer and you don't want to go too deep because it's got like a fairly interesting skin, the zucchini. You may take too much of the flesh if you go too deep with your knife, but it's a sharp knife like mine. It's a paring knife. It should just go right underneath the skin and you get that perfectly. So hand-eye coordination is big here. You don't want to cut your fingers, of course. You want to take your time and then as you prepared your zucchini, peeled it, it's already been washed. You can even rinse it once more. And now this part is the integral part. This is the, the prep part. So you cut it in half, you cut it in half again, and then you've got your star. Whoop, star. That was almost a fumble, but a recovery. And then we've got like the zucchini prepped here and we just chop one, two, three, as I'm chopping, I'm looking for about the size of my finger. Four, five, six, and seven. Captain Seven chops. Perfect. So then the hot skillet. This should be pretty hot by now. The only way to tell truly is you take the water and it should dance. The water should dance in the oil. I can turn it up a little because it's not dancing enough for my liking. It should spackle. Okay, so we'll keep the zucchini there. Next, we Leave take... zucchini alone. 30 years. Next, Leave we zero. take the yes, awesome... Zucchini. Thank you for the, the feedback, sous chef. Kofi zucchini. Squish, squish. You cannot touch them. Next, we take... You touch them. The green pepper. Finish with me. Okay. Zucchini. The green pepper is excellent. Just a combo. Vegetable. You don't know about it. And you have to take the inside of the pepper here. It's got some extra skin that grows, and you just have to peel that back perfectly. So pairing knife skills are key in the kitchen. So as we're doing this, now I can hear it sparkling. As it's sparkling, ooh, <laughs> it wants to burn me a little bit. So step away from the hot source with the preparation. Let's turn it down a little bit. Turn off the water. I don't want to waste water. So we got that. Two, three, four, five. Okay. So, again, about a finger's length. Woo! Now it's sparkling real good. Okay, let's take it off the heat. And then we've got our, again, finger length in the opposite direction. So, first lengthwise, then widthwise. Some people refer to this. Keeping method as Macedonian. I'll give you deep. Go deep. I would agree this is a good style. And some people like to fine dice it in their omelets. I like to cube it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I angle the pan away from me. And I place it on here and it's going to start to sparkle. And that's good. Place it back on over here and I shift the oil around the vegetables. As I've got two vegetables, my zucchini and my green pepper, I've got now my awesome tomato. And I have that. I like to take the center stem part, that out. Some people keep with it and they cook with it. I, I prefer not to cook with that little stem part. Then I quarter it. I wish I could show you this. We'll have to make this higher next time. So I've quartered it. It looks like this. And then, again, I've cut again. So now I have eights. And as I do this, again, I'm sticking with the linear cooking. So on appearance, it's going to appear uniform with the other vegetables. So again, I look for a finger's width. And it works out to be four again for this particular tomato. Now most tomatoes will be in about that for one, two, three, four cuts for cubing. Okay, so that's awesome. So as that's right now frying and frying well, you're gonna start to get some delicious smells in the kitchen. So your olfactory senses, your nose is picking up those awesome smells and this is a great way to having waking up on a long week on a Friday to get your self involved with some exercise and some healthy cooking building up an appetite is the way my family always grew up saying as 
You know, you gotta build up an appetite. So, here we go. Now we put a little bit of salt into the pan that's now quite hot. Everything's sizzling here perfectly. I personally love heat, and that's like not just like hot, you know, preparation to the table. I love spices that are hot. Now, this is cayenne pepper. There's a lot of different types of spices. Cayenne pepper is really quite delicious. And I put a generous amount. It's like half of a teaspoon of that. And then with that, I then move this. This is going to go on for about two to five minutes. And that's perfect time for me to get my eggs prepped. So this omelet step-by-step -step process and always keep your back straight as you're looking for utensils. So, and then and keep the back straight. So, what we do is we move the spices, now the salt and the cayenne, perfectly uniform without having disturbed the dish too much. And you can see it's starting to become quite vibrant. So, these colors are not only appetizing, but they're also way healthy. Remember that. So, Let's keep this here. Very good. Next we go get our eggs. So that's in the fridge, keeping the back straight. We look for our eggs. And typically for an omelet, you're gonna want at least three to four eggs. So right now we got one, two, three. Let's go with four eggs. Let me place the eggs back right away into the fridge. Closing the fridge right away to keep energy right and then we've got our nice little bowl for mixing and I wash the egg before I crack it rinse it and place it over here without it rolling off because we happen to have some peel still from the cucumber that will act as a cool little barrier there we go and there we go good so now this is cooking and it should be making that sound. That's awesome. I'm going to turn it up a little bit as I'm going to introduce the egg and I want really high heat when I introduce the egg. So crack it. And crack it. There's zwei. Ein, zwei. You can make it in German. And trois in Francaise. And chatere in Ukrainian. There we go. Three languages with four eggs making Captain Seven. Awesome. Okay. Next, we're going to wash our hands from the egg yolk so we're not transferring potentially any E. coli. This is a big part of kitchen cross-contamination, safety number one. All people that cook in kitchens know about this. Maybe you utilize a glove, and with a glove, you can get some very important things going on there as far as not transferring things. But a lot of times, people should switch gloves when they work from, let's say, a poultry to a meat. This is what I was taught, and uh, I personally don't mind touching the meat, uh, but having a gloves is definitely, if you're working repetition with a lot of meat, it's a good way to do it. So the fork, then at a high rate, whisks it up, and you want to beat the eggs quite well. And now, this part is really important for your omelet. So you go back to the vegetables, and they should be clarifying as called in a kitchen. So that clarification is happening where it's turning translucent. And that's just about right. I've got about another 30 seconds here. I'll put a minute on there. And then I'm going to add my important egg that's been whipped. Then, this is vegetable oil. I'm gonna introduce more. And like I said before, most of the oil has already been sucked by the delicious vegetables. And what I mean by that is they're cooking alongside and some of it is evaporating. So I'm gonna put another generous amount of oil in here. This is the key for it to not stick to your pan. You want a lot of oil and you want it really scorching hot for really good, well-made Spanish omelet. Now, to really make it Spanish, I have to introduce some onion and I have a special ingredient since I don't happen to have onion and we'll get to that in a second. So, it's looking pretty good. Gonna bring that heat up really high now. 
what I want to see before I put in the egg, I want to see the dancing bubbles. And there should be a fast moving dancing bubble. There's the one minute. Nothing's in the oven at this point, but I think eventually we'll have to put in some bread to go with the Spanish omelet. And now, I'm pretty happy about what I'm seeing here. This is a very hot pan now. So now I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna even add in one little step that's important. You put a little bit of milk, just a bit, just a little splash of milk. That's another important ingredient. And put that in there, and in it goes. And there we go. So now this egg should go all the way to the perimeter. This is the right type of pan. This is about four, five, six inch pan. You got eight inch pan, you might add some more eggs. But you should get your omelet to look, and I'll show you what it should be looking like at this point. You can see how all of the ingredients are really starting to take a different form from the original forms. There's, they're starting to become part of the dish. And the awesome perimeter, and this is an important part for making your Spanish omelet, and you can see it's starting to form on the edges. What I do to speed up this process is I take a lid. So keeping the back straight, reach my lid, and put it back in there. So there we go. So now we've got a lid on the awesome omelet. I'm going to, because the lid's on there and the it's quite hot already, I want the omelet to scorch the egg. And now since it's done so, I'm going to bring it right down. And this is a Spanish omelet secret, is that if you get it right down to minimum, you just allow the convection heat of the very good German cookware to cook your omelet perfectly, which gives you the time to do other things in the kitchen. So I happened to have gone yesterday and got some of my favorite bread. And this authentic calabrese baguette is one of my favorites. My partner woke up yesterday and had some delicious smoked oysters <laughs> and half of the baguette. And that's awesome. because. She, like me, loved baguette, and smoked oysters with a baguette is delicious. I didn't even ask her if she toasted it, but toasting it with a little bit of cream cheese, which I think cream cheese is gone, which is a really good way to have oysters. So, next, let's check our oven. we got to get that oven to the right temperature for heating up bread, and we're not cooking the bread. So this is not from scratch. This bread is already cooked. So what we want to do is bring our temperature closer to a 275. Okay, and that way, the time in which it takes for our omelet, we'll set the timer here for 10 minutes to check it. That's typically on very low heat. Now you can see how low the heat is. I'm not going to open it because that would take away from all that great heat that's in there. So, and put one hand the filled way. Very right, good. Keep this aside. We got to look for a pan. And our pen is right here. And we've got the bread. I'm not going to open the bread. Some people open the bread, which is fine. I like to, if I'm heating up bread, I keep it closed. And then I open it once I've cooked it. And then I can even put it back in if I want to crisp the inside of it. So, and it goes into the center rack. I can turn on the light here to check in on it, see how it's doing. I'm also going to clean my surface here. I'm going to put a little bit of water into the sink. Where I'm going to pre-prep the washing. And this is a good organizational thing for all kitchens. As you're cooking, you want to be able to keep ahead of the ball game. Keeping clean workstation is a great way to be able to visually see things. So now I've got my omelet under control. I've got my bread in the oven. And I also need to take my zucchini peelings and a little bit of that tomato. And since I happen to have this bread thing, I could place it in here. Or I think I may even have some plastic from, yes early on. So 
Typically, a lot of kitchens now are outfitted with composting. Maybe some buildings are too. Mine is not. However, it would be a great thing. And I think they eventually, at the garbage depot, is some of them actually separate, and then they find the compost. Uh, I'm not too familiar with what they do here in Ottawa, but I do know that in Toronto, it's 100% something the municipalities have worked towards and having a composting program that works quite well. You just separate it in the green. I think even... The residents here that are not in buildings, I've seen the green container, so yes, there must be a composting program here too, just not in our particular building. I spied on it just to make sure that it was doing okay and it's doing perfect. And the bread is looking good too. So next we're going to get our plates, two plates. I'm happy to see and relate that my left hand, I couldn't do this before, but I'm doing a lot of therapy, shoveling, raking, stretching, and I could not do this. I'm pretty happy that I can now lift two plates like that, and it's not giving me any pain. That's actually quite good. So uh, the two plates get out. we got to get some cutlery, and what I do with cutlery, even though it's been washed, I always rinse my cutlery. Hot water, and I rinse the part where the handle is, as well as I rotate the cutlery, and there we go. And then I place the cutlery onto the plate, and that's a good way to get prepped for some champions breakfast making. So, being the 21st, and I'm in apartment 21 here, I'm going to bring the plates over here to the table. Place one fork and one knife on either side. And that's the right way to get the table set in the morning time here. So we've got other things that we can place with this great omelet. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, place the camera here and then show you what else you should be having with a very healthy breakfast for getting those important nutrients. So there we go. That could stay there. Now the oil which I've already utilized and I have enough in the omelet, it goes away and what I can do is I can rinse it because typically a little bit of oil gets on it and you want to get oil on different parts of your kitchen. So you wash that, shake it off a little bit and under the sink I keep mine there. A lot of people keep their oil on the countertop, some people put it up in the uh, cupboards. I've seen some people put their oil even around like the stove. I prefer not to have my oil there just as like a fire hazard safety kind of thing but a lot of kitchens that are you know constantly cooking some of them have them up top and uh, I like to keep my oil away from the heat I always bring my oil to a pan and then having it you know a-okay the entire time I'm cooking that's the way I like to do it so next I'm gonna get an orange I'm gonna select an orange and the bananas are not yet ripe so get two, two oranges. Now oranges are interesting. You got to set like when you play baseball <coughs> and you grab onto your baseball or softball. Most baseballs and softballs have a certain, we got the oven is now at the right temperature for the bread. So that's that beep. So the way that you check your orange is you go around the perimeter and as you're rotating around the perimeter you can sense the firmness of an orange it shouldn't be so firm and it should not be so soft I mean if it's too soft it's no good but it should be like this one is perfect it's semi firm and there's a little bit of give when I push into the poles which is the this part here, the stem, connects, right? And then this part here too. So again, I wash my knife in between. I take my great little thing here for cleaning. Clean off the knife. The orange has already been washed, but I can again rinse it quickly. And then what I want to do with the orange, I go perfectly through the nape, as it's called. And I... And cut a perfect shape for the orange. Okay, it should look like so. Then, again, I place another cut through the center, so then it's gonna look like this. So just like 
the tomato, I get it into quarters. Once it's in a quarter, I like it this way. And what I do is I take a little bit of the corner of the orange and I cut that little part of the corner off. Just like so. Then this part, which is a little bit of a tough part, I often, what I'll do is I'll turn the orange to the side and it has to be a really sharp knife to get that part. And then I just slice that part off. So at the end of the orange preparation for the plate, it should be easily able to be picked up and then eaten just like that. So that's good. And what I'm going to do is I have this other large bowl. I'm going to place the oranges into this large bowl. So there we go. So now we've got some oranges. We've got the omelets under control. We've got two more minutes on the board and I still have this other orange to go. And that's awesome. And let's check to see how this one is. Ooh, quite juicy on the inside. That's excellent. That's a good sign. And again, I'm going to remove that part at the end of the orange. I'm going to place these quartered oranges in here. Take that part off. Another thing too is vitamin C is key during the winter months. Because we're in a climate that's not very warm in the winter months, and you don't usually see a lot of farmers growing oranges here in Canada in the winter, a lot of the oranges come from different parts of the world or they're stored. So either way, you want to make sure your oranges are awesome and juicy just like that. So this will now go to the table. Okay, so now we've got oranges, we've got the meal underway, we've got 58 seconds, and this is my masterclass for Spanish delicious omelet making with the only ingredient missing being an onion, and my secret important addition will be salsa, because salsa has some tomatoes and onions in it, and it gives a little bit of extra kick and spice. I like to put that either on top of the delicious omelet or I put it on the side. Either way, it makes it taste delicious. So that's it for now. Have a champion's morning rise continuing everyone locally, internationally, and globally. Keep going one step at a time in a champion's Olympic way, thinking ahead one step at a time, and you shall achieve whatever you set your mind to. That is the Olympic method. Keep having fun, everyone.